Well, welcome to the Big Muddy Speaker Series. We have Sean O'Kelly with uh, Kansas City Water Services. He's a division engineer for wastewater. He's a historical picture expert. Uh, Sean's been with the, the city for uh, years and years and uh, has taken advantage of their uh, archive of uh, uh, historical photos and will regale us with uh, <clears throat> issues with getting uh, all our, our drinking water across the river. So even though Kansas City developed south of the river, the best place for the water was, for the plant was north of the river, and that of course brought up all kinds of issues. Uh, issues like uh, we're having today with uh, the water levels on the Missouri River. So uh, I guess I didn't give any kind of uh, updates, but we did have Blue River Rescue, and uh, we had like 700 volunteers and 30 tons of trash and 600 tires. The river this right now, uh, basically because of snow melt and rain, and then uh, what's in the upper basin and what they're releasing from the lakes, is uh, we're not at flood stage here in Kansas City, but the highways are still closed north of St. Joe, and they're at flood stage in Napoleon and farther down the river. Uh, that will probably continue for maybe another 30 days while they draw down the reservoirs. Uh, but uh, those are just, and so the river levels are one of the issues with getting water across the river. And uh, that's just one of the things I'll uh, let Sean talk about and I'll shut up. Okay, um, my name's Sean, of course. This is a photograph, opening day of the Hannibal Bridge, the first bridge across the Missouri. Um, I always wondered why we didn't hang our pipes on bridges, and it wasn't until wondering about that for years and years and gathering more history that I found out why. But, um, and I was going to research this, but New York City, they get their water from hundreds of miles away, and their tunnel is 36 foot diameter from the Adirondacks. And I uh, just met somebody, other day, somebody the, the other day, no one's allowed on those drinking water lakes way up in the mountains because it goes directly untreated into people's houses through these ginormous tunnels. So down to New York City and piped from 11 floors below into uh, people's houses. And they didn't have water meters. They just let you have a pipe and you paid a monthly fee, which they're changing now. But So the history of tunnels for drinking water is very old. but. Anyway, I always wondered why we didn't hang it on a bridge when I first started with the water department. Okay, so this is Hannibal Bridge. This is 1870, opening day, 1869. Um, of course, everybody's out there uh, enjoying the river and the, the first bridge across the Missouri. There's a great book on this I was explaining. It's called The Bridge by Octave Chanute, if you can find it. This is the, um, the guys who built the, built the uh, bridge, and they're, they're standing on the deck. <laughs> And it has the single track. I was on the um, second Hannibal Bridge yesterday taking pictures, and I noticed that the new bridge has two tracks. And this is the bridge open with a um, steamboat going through. And they talked about nobody ever wrecked going underneath that bridge, which I thought that was cool. But we're here to talk about water lines. So our first treatment plant was in the historic West Bottoms at Turkey Creek in 1874. And then soon, about three years later, the Kansas River turned green, sour. And um, so they looked for a fresher, cleaner source of water. And they went to the Missouri River in Quindaro, where BPU, British, British Petroleum, BPU, uh, Board, of Public Thank you, Board of Public Utilities, <laughs> BPU, British Petroleum. So they had to get the water from Kansas City, Kansas, across the Kansas River, so they built what they called the flow line bridge. Now, this part in the middle is a repair. If you look at the date down here, 1912, the bridge tea kettled or fell into the river in 1903. This one of the, the third biggest flood in 1903 upset 16 bridges in two hours. I remember Larry was talking about it in a talk. But So 16 bridges on the Kansas River 
went under in two hours, and one of them was our flow line, and we didn't have water to our customers. There's a, an article about the guys rebuilding this in four days. Guy came down from Chicago and rebuilt it. This is in 1912, right before they're taking it out of commission, because I don't have the photographs of it, but there's a tunnel built underneath the Kansas River. So this is our first water tunnel. In um, 1905, 1906, we built a tunnel. It's a 30-inch. It's still there, but, of course, it's out of commission. It's, we don't use it anymore, but it's our first tunnel. We have four tunnels. We have four water tunnels. This is another picture of Flowline Bridge. The buildings behind are the packing houses that, if you're familiar with Kansas City, Kansas, or the West Bottoms, right here is where UPS has their yard um, on the... Uh, Missouri side of the Kansas River. It's still in Kansas, but... So they're sliding the uh, bridge across. What's interesting is this bridge still stands. That's the James Street Bridge. It's still there. So this is what it looks like from Missouri looking across to Kansas City, Kansas in um, 1913. And they went, built this, ton this uh, beautiful uh, tower, which is the north shaft of the Caw River Tunnel. There's another picture of it. That's what it looks like today. So that's what it looked like when people lived on the river and the railroad tracks. The river was up a little bit, but that's the same picture. That same, the same railroad track is right here at this elevation, and there's nothing there. There's a little bit of water structure back here in the trees. I just love that uh, tower. So it's long gone, and all these buildings are long gone. Nobody's down on the river. Then this is a shot on the Missouri River by the airport um, looking uh, downriver through the, all the bridges. So Broadway, 2nd Hannibal, ASB, and the Heart of America. You can't see the Bond Bridge from here. So why didn't we hang a pipe on the river? Well, come to find out nobody hangs a pipe on the bridge. So here's the Hannibal Bridge from the Broadway Bridge location looking uh, downriver and across to... Do you guys know Harlem over here on the other side of the river? It's still called Harlem. That's Kansas City, Missouri. But the reason we didn't hang a pipe on this bridge is a tornado took the bridge out in 1880s. So it wasn't a good idea either. Plus the bridge has the pivot in the middle right here that opens. So there's another reason you can't hang a pipe on it. Kansas City, Kansas was our treatment plant from 18, 18, early 1880s until 1930. So uh, Fuller and Maitland was our engineer. So they did a um, report on a new treatment plant. There are five locations to pick, and they picked where the treatment plant is now. It was started in the 20s, 22, 25. The previous talk I gave showed the construction of the water plant. But this is the review, and this on the same library uh, Google and Harvard University uh, digitized it. And the director, Terry, he has this book in his office. He showed it to me. In that report, they said, build this tunnel three miles long, the Missouri Valley Tunnel. So it goes from the waterworks up here in the bend in the river to the Hannibal Bridge. And that's the alignment. This is the what we call the downshaft. Back in the um, 20s, the Brooklyn Bridge was probably the first to use the reverse bell or teacup design where you go in, in air pressure. You have to enter eight, this 85 PSI inside of here, and you have to go through an airlock to get inside. And they drill this down 100 feet to bedrock. This tunnel's 250 feet deep. So you could see it going down. So and then it's... An, airlock to get in so that it keeps water out and you can drill. So this is the Turkey Creek Tunnel. It's a second. It's our, another tunnel built at the same time. It's only 170 foot deep, but it goes from the Hannibal Bridge to where we call Turkey Creek today, the Turkey Creek Reservoir, which is um, basically the American Royal for anybody, where the American Royal sits. And this is another one. This again is the Turkey Creek tunnel. So this is the Missouri Valley Tunnel. This is 1926 in North Kansas City. So you have an airline 
it looks like maybe a water line or a water line or a pumping line, railroad track, and then the wooden, the uh, wooden timber uh, to keep the ceiling from caving in on you while you're building the tunnel. The next picture is the finished tunnel. So you see this concrete here where it narrows down. That's poured concrete pipe. So they put up forms and they poured concrete in there underground. Don't have a lot of pictures of the old tunnel. This is the uh, explosion that happened in 1926. I reread the report yesterday on what happened. And a fan belt broke at 12.30 in the morning. They ran three shifts. Eight men uh, died in the explosion. So um, behind it is the second Hannibal Bridge. See the vehicle right here on the upper deck? So this has two trail... I'll, I'll talk about the explosion in a second. This is the Hannibal Bridge, though, the second Hannibal, which allowed tr car traffic on an upper deck. The second, the explosion, this was the Missouri Valley Tunnel, the north shaft, so they call it MV2. So MV1 drove from the, from the water treatment plant, and MV2 drove from the south side of the river, and they were going to meet. I think they were like a half a foot off when they met. A fan belt broke on the blower that pulled the air out of the tunnel. When you're down 250 feet, you're into shale, and in shale there's oil and natural gas, a lot of it. So as long as you're pulling the air out, you don't build up the explosive gases in the tunnel. So the belt broke. They didn't have a belt. It sat till 4.30 in the morning, from 12.30 to 4.30, and they put a new belt on the blower. And what they should have done, which we do today, is they should have waited a couple hours to clear the air. Instead, at 4.30, they went in at 4.40. They went in 10 minutes later, late, later into the tunnel. And it was a 2,600-foot 2, tunnel at that time. The, the end-up tunnel was three miles long. But anyway, it's 2,600 feet to the face where they were working. They got to the face in 20 minutes because it's... You can walk a half a mile in, in 20 minutes. And they started work. And five minutes after they started work, somebody spiked, um, struck an arc, you know, a spark, and the tunnel blew up. And it, everybody, everybody in the tunnel died. So this is, the, this is all the media, of course. And then they're just waiting for the men to be brought up, recover the men the next day. As you can imagine, they had to let the fan run and let the explosive gases out. These are the mules that they used on the railroad track as the engine to pull the material out as they drilled and blasted. And then the north shaft, both shafts caught on fire. This is just some pictures we have of the, uh, the at the, actually I don't know which one this is. North, yeah, so that's at the water trim plant. So I had a couple pictures of the fire. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, so that's it for the Missouri Valley Tunnel. That's all I have. This is the second tunnel. So by the 80s, 1980s, the tunnel had been in service since 1930, 50 years, and we didn't know what it looked like. There's no way to inspect it. You can't shut it off because it supplies... The city uses, on the south side of the river, 80 to 100 million gallons of water a day. And we only have 30 million gallons of storage. So you can't shut the water off, ever. You know, or we wouldn't have water south of the river. So we couldn't inspect the old tunnel. So we built a second tunnel so that we could inspect the old tunnel and repair it. And it did need some repairs. That bell that went down, it went out a little bit of an angle, and they wanted to straighten it out. This shows the new tunnel. This is 300. That's zero. So that's minus 300 feet deep the new tunnel. And then what they wanted to do was avoid the natural gas explosion. Of course, we hit natural gas on the new tunnel. And then it shows it coming straight up on the south side of the river. What I find interesting here, there's a better picture here. What I find interesting, this is dirt. Okay, so this is the top of the ground. This is the shaft. That's the shaft. That's the shaft. This is rock. So that's what the rock profile looks. That's 100 feet deep. So that's about 130 feet deep. That's the depth of the Missouri River. So look how deep we are. We're in, what we're into is a level of shale 
that's easy to dig through. It's easier to dig down another 50, 60 feet to avoid the coal and natural gas that's down underneath and these seams of rock. Now, we drilled down through them, but we didn't have to drill three miles through them. And there's actually a sample of all the dirt. This is up in 63rd Street, up on the second floor in engineering, this display. I just went and took a photograph of it. This is the project started in um, 1990. It's a $20 million project, 90 to 92, 20, 350 feet deep. For, this is just the numbers. 760 pieces of pipe. The tunnel was 12 foot diameter. We put a nine foot pipe inside of there. So we have a 90 inch water line is all we have is underground, a solid. And then we filled with grout and concrete the shafts. And then the second tunnel, of course, is to inspect the original tunnel and, repair, and take it out of service and repair it. Instead of the reverse bell uh, that we did in 26, we froze the ground. See all the brine here? Well, you don't see any brine, all you see is frost. So this is an air conditioning unit. They drilled a circle of pipes, uh, inner circle and then an outer circle, and they froze the ground for six months, four months or whatever. So all of this is frost on a summer day. And they physically froze the ground about three foot thick, a hundred feet straight down. So then they put in a coffer dam, which is a concrete or a metal liner, down about 20 feet. And then they hit the, the ground and they hand dug it out with the alpine, with this alpine unit, this um, deal, that thing, the end of the, the end of the head spins and then they clamshelled the uh, stuff out. So as they went further down, they're clamshelling it out. What I found interesting, the ground, if you don't, if you do not insulate, so they sprayed foam to keep the ground frozen because it would melt and slough off and they'd lose their hole and then someone would drown. So they had to drill this way at 100 feet to bedrock. When they got to bedrock, they went an extra 15 feet into the bedrock and then they installed a grain silo. It's the best way I can describe it. They poured a grain silo back up 115 feet to ground. And that's concrete going down to fill in that rebar. And they used this platform a little bit to put in support. But in the end, this is the concrete silo built against the frozen ground. So it's solid concrete all the way down to 110 feet. Now we still have 250 more feet to go. And this is an interesting picture, I don't show it later, but can you see that white thing right there? Yes, no? Yes. That's Linda going down. <coughs> She's going down to the bottom. So this is actually the completed downshaft, but we'll get to that in a minute. So then they put the vertical boring machine. So see the screw to pull the dirt out? This thing grabs the walls pushes down and drills straight down. Vertical boring machine. You don't really get to see it much because once it's in the hole, you don't go down there. I didn't work during this phase of the project. So this is it going down the hole and this tub here, they'd fill with rock from that screw and then they'd pull five of them out one at a time and then stack them and put them all back in and start over again. And they'd keep, they just kept drilling down. And they just had to, um, this, is the, this is all the way down at the bottom. And all they had to do was put in wire mesh to hold the walls in, in the shale and limestone and rock. So this is the bottom of the down shaft. There's an elevator here to the right. That's an air shaft. The, tunnels out, the tunnel boring machine's already gone that way a, a mile or so at this point. I wasn't on the project when they were drilling the lower tunnel. That's, I took this picture, though. And that's, this is the tail tunnel. You can tell the difference between the, the formal tunnel and the tail tunnel because the tail tunnel was hand dug and it's half circle. The uh, main tunnel is circular because it's a vertical, it's a tunnel boring machine and they're round. All tunnel boring machines are just a round cylinder punched through the ground. It's the way all tunneling is done. This is the, the downshaft again. This is the elevator. These are the mine cars. That's the tail tunnel. There's Stephen Collins. He was one of the inspectors. 
I shot um, three rolls of film to get this one shot. Natural light, so that's the lights lighting the area. And, it, and he had to stand still for that because it's a long exposure to get the to get the look. And this got the cover of our annual report that year. So that's the that's the formal tunnel there, three miles. And another shot. I just had a lot of shots of this, so. This is 19, uh, December 1991. And this is the, um, these are the mine cars where we put the tailings as we drill the shale and it'd fill five of these cars. And see this rail system? They'd pull the, with the crane, they'd pull the material out and dump it on the ground above. And that's the downshaft. You're looking straight up 350 feet to sunlight. So this is limestone and rock with just a screen on it. And then the, uh, that concrete part is way up here. But it's so tall, you can't see all the way up there. This is, um, I did a long exposure using natural light instead of flash. So I got the men working, doing stuff, and it's, they're kind of shadowy. See, they're, they're taking a car and moving it up. There's a bunch of these. And the, this is their headlights on their, um, on their helmets. Everybody had a headlight, a safety escape thing for the tunnel. This is the natural light of the tunnel looking down. This is interesting because um, tunneling, if you're not going to build a concrete tunnel like you would the channel, as they built the channel, they had a shield on the machine, and they physically put the concrete sections in together as they built the tunnel. They built the walls. For a tunnel where you're going to put a pipe in the ground, you do a whiskey barrel. And a whiskey barrel is three pieces of steel bent in 120 degrees and then wood on the sides and wood over the top to protect you from the tunnel caving in on top of you. So those are ribs, and we call it a whiskey barrel design. So now we're going to talk about Linda. This, this is Linda. And everybody had to take a shot with Linda, posed in front of it, which I thought was funny. So this is the end of the job. We're on the, north, we're on the south side of the river. This is Veolia, or Trigen, we used to call it. They're at First and Grand, the power plant. That's the oil tank for the power plant, which is where the upshaft is. This is the ASB bridge right here. Um, the deck part of the ASB bridge. This is the face, the tunnel. I asked Clay today, the engineer, he said these rollers would last 20 hours and they'd have to replace them. So 20 hours of active use and every one of these rollers, or like 20 of them, had to be replaced. So that's Linda at the end of her run. That's Linda in the factory up in Canada. So um, Linda's 250 feet long. This is just the first 5, 10, 5... So 25 feet of uh, Linda. So this head, there's a line right here where it spins. These rollers here chew the rock up. And it falls in this space here, and as it goes around, the uh, rock falls in, and the conveyor takes it back to those rail cars. So Linda came on semis. You wouldn't believe how many pictures I have of them assembling We've only done this once, so there's 400 pictures of them putting Linda together. So I had to pick which ones to um, the 15 to show you out of the 400. So they're hooking her up, and there's the rollers, and they're putting her to the other one before they drop her down in the hole. And there's all the hydraulic machines. It's, it's electric hydraulic, so it's run by 4160 power motors running hydraulic uh, motors, and everything's hydraulics. So these are the engineers and the contractor all. A lot of talking, a lot of... There's... Um, oh, my God, I can't remember his name. He was the main superintendent of the contractor. He loved to yell at people. So that's Linda going down in the hall, the first piece. And then that's the trailing gear, and there's a conveyor mounted on top of the trailing gear. That's the 250 feet. So the train could drive into... Um, under the trailing gear and the conveyor could drop into the cars. So the engineer, the 
guy who drove the train, he would drop a set off. They would take that first car and the, the set, the whiskey barrel, they'd pull it out, then they'd bring that car back, and then the machine would be pushing and mining. You could fill five rail cars with five feet of tunnel. There's the uh, engines. We had three engines in the tunnel at one time. Not initially, but after about a few thousand feet, we had three engines. One would be at the one would be em being emptied, one would be waiting, and one would be at the face collecting material. So they're loading the engines up. These are diesel, and they would scrub the air with uh, water. And there's another shot of Linda on the inside. And you can see the conveyor, the material would fall down in here. And this is actually a belt conveyor to take it back. And this is the trailing gear. You can see the, the iron or the steel I-beams and then the wood. They didn't always, there's paneling here, but you wouldn't always have wood on the sides. You could a lot of, a lot of times see the shale. And you'll see that in some uh, pictures in a second. There's clay. He's in St. Louis. He's driving a 28-foot diameter tunnel for uh, the water authority, the sewer authority in St. Louis, because they're under a consent degree to collect their storm water. So he's doing miles of 28-foot diameter tunnel. So their machines are 28-foot diameter. But he's, he's a tunnel engineer with Black and & Veatch and a great guy to work for. And this is Jack, uh, Black and Veach's safety guy. He's since retired. So this is the tunnel again. There's a railroad track here. We called the water. The tunnel had a slight incline. So any water generated at the face would, would fall um, gently back to the downshaft and be pumped out. Downshaft's the lowest part. And if you had to dewater the whole tunnel, there's, it's a gentle slope, a 1% slope, a point, point 1% slope which is three foot rise and 100 foot, I think. Point one? No, it's point three, it doesn't matter. I'm not a civil. This is the air shaft that keeps you alive, so it's always pulling air out while you're in the tunnel so it doesn't blow up. Um, I found this really interesting. During day shift when they did maintenance, they would drill a, a rod 160 feet in front of Linda the head wouldn't be spinning, and they would drill this rod, 160 foot, to hit any pockets of natural gas, mining for natural gas. And one time they hit a pocket of gas so big, everybody left, everybody got out, and they had to wait 20 hours for the gas to go down. Because there's, there's gas monitors now. We, we, know when the, we know when we have gas, natural gas now. And so this is another shot of him putting those rods in, so every day they had to drill during day shift this rod and do all the other maintenance. If they only drill, they only bored second and third shift. It was a 24 hour operation, even on weekends. This is just a really cool shot of the tunnel. It's uh, not a shot I took. This is Jack Teague. He was the main inspector and Clay, the project engineer. And this just shows the, it was just a really cool shot. And they're checking their air monitors. Actually, it's probably posed for the uh, photographer. These are the air tunnels. There's three air tunnels, one by Tanemic, where the quick trip is on north on Burlington. We chose to drive the latest tunnel down the middle of Burlington. Why? Anybody? Why would we drive the tunnel down the middle of a street, a highway? We didn't have to pay any easements to any property owners because your easement is, is straight down. So I don't have to pay anybody. This, we made an agreement with the state of Missouri, which owns the Burlington, and we didn't have to pay them any easement money. So that's why it follows the middle of Burlington. But these side tunnels had to be drilled on private property. So that's a 350-foot, 36-inch diameter escape tunnel. And we had to do side audits, so we had to drill a side tunnel by hand. See all these little pieces of wire? Those are air tubes, and that's dynamite. So they're putting 26 charges of dynamite, all tied to one thing, and we would get out and they would blast, and that would, 
23 feet, so that's 23 blasts, because it only did a foot of tunnel when you hand blasted like that. When these guys got out of here this day, I took this picture, a foot of rock fell right where they were standing. So it didn't, they just stepped out, and a foot of the ceiling came down. See, there's no support above them. So it was very dangerous. And this is what it looks like for the air shaft. There's a fan here that's just absolutely screaming, blowing air out that shaft. You didn't stand by these very long. They're really loud. And we had air monitors, and here's the main. Um, so you can see this air tunnel goes into that shaft. So they're pulling the air out. We don't blow air into a tunnel. We suck the, we suck the air out. So there was a, um, at the face, it would pull the air. So if you hit gas, it would be pulled out straight to the atmosphere immediately. And fresh air came in the downshaft and in. Then we had a laser. And that's the, what the laser looks like. Can you guys see it? There's two in the picture. Do you know what this one is? A reflection on the water. So then I, I took a shot. I took a shot with no light. That's a 10-minute shot. I just thought that was really cool. This is not a flash shot. This is a hand-painted shot. Do you know what that means? I left the lens open and painted it with my flashlight, my headlamp. And it's a little overexposed and a little underexposed, but it gives the depth. I did all my shots like that. This is just an open, open uh, shot. This is hand-painted. I really like this shot. But you can really see the whiskey barrel. You can see this, where you can see the shale, the air, air on top. This is a 4160, 4,161 volt line for the power. And this is a water line in case for water up at the machine. This is really interesting to me. This is the California switch. So you elevate the, um, you elevate the railroad track so two trains can cross. So if you're two miles in, this is a mile in. So you have a train at the downshaft. You have a train on the switch and you have a train at the machine. So you don't have to wait so long between trains. And so that's the California switch again. And then there's a train sitting on the California switch. So you have the, the engine, you have the guy, and you have the five cars. And he's waiting. He's waiting either for the train at the face or he's waiting for the train at the downshaft. I don't remember. Well, actually, the face is that way, and the downshaft is behind us. There's the oil. So we hit oil one night, and it rained oil for about a week before we got through it. So all this black is oil dripping down. So you hit coal seams. We didn't really hit coal ever, but we hit natural gas and we hit oil. So when they talked about fracking, a lot of people don't understand fracking. We fracked with a machine. So there's oil trapped in little pockets all through the ground at a very shallow depth. And if you go in there and explode it, you're going to mix all the oil with all the groundwater. Great idea. But this shows all those little pockets of oil. Even under the, this is at like um, North Oak. It's north, about 16th in Burlington is where this is this particular spot. And we hit it for three or 400 feet. So we had oil for four days, five days, and our, our rain suits were just covered with dripping oil because you're just standing in it, working. It's pretty quiet down there except for the machine. This is the group of uh, inspectors. There I am. That's Jack, um, Dorothy, Clay, Gary, Stephen. You guys know Sharon Barnes, right? Sharon Barnes, Vicky? Yes. That's Sharon Barnes. She hired me for the water department. And I don't remember his name. I didn't really know him. Clay told me his name, but I wrote it down and I forgot it. But that's Sharon there. So this was the team of inspectors for the downshaft. And there's me with my uh, kind of out of focus. So this is the trailing gear looking down the tunnel back towards the, the downshaft. This is the curve. We actually curved out of Burlington at the ASB Bridge to... Is that me? No, I'm kidding. I know. See the guy, the ghost? 
So this is the natural light of the machine. The lights face backwards. So the conveyor's over our head. A train would come in. When the train would leave, it would take 15, 20 minutes to get to the switch and for the next train to come. So it was hurry up and wait. So you'd work. They would work. I was the inspector. I never did anything. So I just took pictures. You know, I mean, what do you, what's there to inspect? Same, same thing every day. But I work night shift, so this is, at, this is at 3 in the morning. So you're 3 in the morning, you're down the middle of nowhere in some hole with five or seven guys, and we all just stand around. So this guy's sitting here, and I used a natural light. I didn't use flash, and so it's a five-minute exposure. So these are ghosts walking around, ghosts in the machine. And this is the same thing, just a little different spot. We twisted, um, we twisted one of the um, sets. It's called a set. And um, again, we're just waiting for another train. So the train shows up, and it drops a set. So these are the three beams that make up these, uh, the whiskey barrel. And these are the timbers that we put in between the two for a five-foot push. You could push five feet. And we would eight, eight pushes a shift, or eight, or eight a night. I don't remember. We had to go 14,000 feet. I know that. And so this is them hurrying up to put a set in. And they're under the protection of the machine. There's a shield. So they can install this without ever being, being exposed to the top of the, the exposed rock. So you're never in any danger for a collapse. And so this is several pictures of them putting in a set. And then the set's done in half an hour. We'll wait for the next train. And there are a couple extra boards left over. This is the guy that operates the machine. And this is one of the crew of four or five that install the set. And here's the air shafts going to the face in case we hit natural gas. So it pulls it directly out. Okay, the tunnel's done. We're done with 14,000 feet. We're in the up shaft, which is a little smaller diameter. It's 14 foot diameter, 16 foot diameter. And this is the main guy driving the, the main operator. And this is the superintendent, Oscar. Oscar. And um, Oscar has a 12-pack to hand to him because he's done. He's, well, they call it a holding out. So he's popped through the end and holed out. So that's what the machine looks like when it, it's done. That's me. That's Clay again and Jack. And we're, we... we the minute they push the machine all the way in into the upshaft, they're getting ready to take it apart. They asked me if I wanted to go down in the crane because we had to ride down in a basket. So they dropped us on there and took our picture of the machine. You can see all the water and oil. And there's uh, Linda back out onto the ground. And this is the south side of the river. And again, that's the um, Grand Avenue and the ASB behind us behind over there, Grand Avenue Bridge. So everybody has to get their picture taken and inspect it. There's, again, me on the side there with my camera. And then the director's secretary had to come down. I love the hand in the air. Uh, I can't remember her name, but she was Joy Roy Jackson's secretary and or administrative assistant, and she's got her hand up in the air in front of the, in front of the machine. And there's the ASB in the background. This is the first pipe that went in the hole. So it's double wrap, double coat. That pipe weighed 60 tons. So we have to get a 60 ton pipe three miles up 60 pound rail. The rail was this tall. And the contractor cheated. He should have had bigger railroad rail. This is what he had, so he kind of skimped on the rail. And that pipe would hit the wall once in a while, driving it with the train. So this machine here is what carried that pipe three miles up the hole. So I got a lot of pictures of that. So they're dry fitting the train. They laid track up on. You're not doing it down up here. They're doing it down there. But they got to get it all worked out. This is a brand new machine. They've never used it. And there's the pipe. They have to, it has to go straight down the hole. There's the pipe in the rail yard over um, East Bottoms. There's... 760 of these pipe had to go in the hole. And that's how they lowered it down. And it had to have this fancy hinge so when it got at the bottom, they could turn it and, and drop it. Then they had to drive the machine through it, pick it up, 
And then off they went. And we all rode in the man car, or guys would ride in the pipe all the way to the face. That was fun. So that's the machine there that picked up the pipe. It had to physically drive through the pipe. And these are the guys getting ready to unhook the crane and drive the machine through the pipe. And this is the guy here, this cheap rail. He's trying to push the rail over to meet these wheels. It was just a hassle. This at the downshaft. And then that's the pipe all suited up. Here's the man car. Because there are a lot of us. We all, everybody, eight of us, would go to, with the pipe. Then we come back and get another pipe. And then we go, ba 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 All night long till we laid the pipe reverse all the way through. And uh, the cylinder pulled this pipe into the next pipe to seal it. It had a double seal. It was a very special, you couldn't check it from the outside once it was together. You couldn't get there. So it had to be all checked from the inside of the pipe. So that's what the pipe looks like. I accidentally bought black and white film. So all my pictures are black and white. So this is the pipe laid, and they would pull the rail out as they got the next one. And that dead man is what they hooked that cylinder to and pull that pipe together. So there's the, the dead man's behind me, and there's the uh, cylinder, and they're getting that next pipe ready to uh, connect. And that's the inside of the new pipe kind of clean, and Dorothy and second shift supervise, superintendent down in the hole. And then, again, the new pipe, new pipe. And there's the dead man that they'd pull in. There's Jack. Jack and the man car, and then that's a man basket we all rode out once in a while if we didn't want to take the elevator. And then here's all the guys uh, at the downshaft. Then they wouldn't look at me anymore after I took that picture. Then this is a nice picture of Jack. He was the safety officer. And we did have one accident where a guy got crushed in the trailing gear, but uh, the guys were just pushing the rail car, and he got in the wrong spot. And he got between the rail car and that trailing gear, and it cracked his ribs. He didn't, didn't kill him or anything. We, um, somebody drew the picture around this hole. So I didn't care about the picture. I wanted the picture of the hole. That is a special plug you can pull out, and we pumped grout behind the pipe. So if you look around the space, there's 11 inches around that pipe. So the tunnel's 12 foot, the, the, the wood is 11 foot, and then the pipe is 9 foot. So there's a 11 inch. They filled that with grout, three miles of grout. They pumped in there through those holes. So that pipe, the wood's still there, the wood is still there, the whiskey barrel's still there, the rail is gone, and then it's all concrete, solid in there. Grout, 500 PSI grout. It's this foam, foamed grout. It's just a cool picture of looking down the pipe. Then they put elbows on either end, you know, and then they poured... It was a 200-yard pour for 10 feet of, on the upshaft, or downshaft. So they, had to, they, would have, they would have 10 cement trucks come all at once and put in the rebar, and then they'd pour up to the next piece. Then they had to wait for that to cure, then put the next piece of pipe in. It just took forever to do the shafts, because that's 350 feet up. It's a lot of concrete. So the silo is here, and then we poured this five-foot annular space around the pipe. What we're trying to do is we're trying to make a pipe. The old pipe's coming up on 100 years, and it's just poured in place. We're trying to make a line that'll last 200 years. You know, we don't want to do this again. We wanted to inspect the old tunnel. So this march, we this, this is a robot. This is 12 foot long, a foot and a half wide, and a little over a foot tall. And this is a, a underwater ocean robot, let's say, that we sent three miles down the old line. And uh, Mike Clender, who runs the water plant, he sent me the report. And um, there were a lot of pictures. And it's hard to see, but that's the top, the top of the inside, full of water, because we can't dewater the old tunnel. But we can send a robot down there. So that's drinking water. This is drinking water. And this is the top of the old pipe. 
So that's the original concrete. And then you see this right here, this surface covered? That's lime. Since we're a lime softening plant, you get a slight thin layer of lime coating the tunnel. But for, for all intensive purposes, it's in perfect shape. There's no problem. So some of the lime has flaked off and fall to the floor. So that's the floor of the 19, well, it was put in service in 1930. So that's the floor of the 1930 tunnel. And it's clean as a whistle. If we wanted to clean even this little debris out, we could. The, we just did one of our reservoirs, our upper reservoir, Turkey Creek. I forgot to put the pictures in here. I took a lot of pictures. I put them on history buffs. It looks like a cathedral. There was a foot and a half, there was two and a half feet of lime in that reservoir. It hadn't been cleaned out in 40 years. But because the water is always moving through this, there's no foot or two of lime in the bottom, which kind of surprises me. But the water doesn't sit in here very long. It's always moving moving at a pretty good clip. When we showed the reverse bell in those first pictures of the Missouri Valley Tunnel, that's the Missouri Valley Tunnel. So we've been able to inspect it, and we're able to take the old top off, put new valves in. The pumps are in here that pump south of the river. And they don't pump really high pressure, but they pump high volume. So uh, they were able to redo that tunnel. They kind of changed the alignment a little bit and they put new pipes and new valves to go to it. There's two lines that come to this, and then that's 250 feet straight down for the original tunnel. The original tunnel, all the spoil, is the lab is sitting on. All of this material here, they just dumped it on the ground right there. They had a little railroad track, and they just dumped it right there. When you dig construction in this area, which I've done, you run into a lot of debris. They had a little different standard on backfill in the 20s than we do now. The tunnel that I just showed you, the 91 tunnel, that's what it looks like. So it just looks like a concrete vault. So if you, if you popped that top and jumped in there, you would just see a big circle of a 90-inch cap, uh, iron cap. And there's a 90-inch va valve here that we installed to stop the water into the tunnel if we wanted, if we wanted to dewater it, although we will... We'll send a robot down there someday, but we'll never dewater it. I'm standing on the Hannibal Bridge. You can see the uh, ASB in the heart of America down here, and the Broadway Bridge would, of course, be behind me. And this is the site of the uh, 1929 tunnel. There's actually two tunnels here. The, the Missouri Valley Tunnel comes up here. This is where that photograph of the accident was with all the reporters and everybody. It was taken up here on the bluff a little bit. And this is the Turkey Creek Tunnel downshaft. It goes down 100, and I don't know why, but rather than cross through all the railroad tracks in the historic West Bottoms, you'd almost have to follow the rail lines. They chose to go 170 feet down, shoot across, and come 170 feet back up. And this, that's the... Um, have you guys walked on the new trail going to the river? Anybody? From, from City Market? Okay, so that's that bridge right there. That's a walk bridge. Oh, no, that's the Broadway Bridge back behind. That's the walk bridge. And then the, um, you can't see it, but the uh, Hannibal Bridge is back there. This is the upshaft for the, the Trans-Missouri River Tunnel in 93. And, and it looks like nothing right here, but if you go in that vault right there, it's like a, a half of a basketball gym underground. It's really, it's three, about two and a half stories tall, and it's literally the size of a basketball court, quarter basketball court. Oh, that's the last slide. I knew that. <laughs> hit, the, hit the light there. So any questions for Sean? Use the microphone so we can uh, record you. Larry, I'll give you the microphone. No, he wants to get what? it on tape. They okay, wanted... what was the cost of the 91 tunnel? 20 million. It was in that one, um, I'll bring that back up. I, I knew I'd have questions like that, so I put the fact sheet numbers 
this morning, yesterday maybe, I made the slide, just because everybody likes to know the numbers. No, it's all right, it's all right. You, you, it was before you saw the project. And so is it true that city employees get to use that tunnel to bypass traffic? <laughs> No, we're, we're, we, we have a special pass for the zombie apocalypse to go underground. It's underwater. So why didn't you send divers through the tunnel, the first one, to inspect it instead of building another one? Is that just too dangerous? or You could not shut off the flow. Okay, you, make, you go on TV and say, all water usage will stop for two days while we inspect the tunnel. Yeah, but scuba divers. Two days, no water. City, no fire protection, no water to hospitals, no water. You, so you couldn't you no, run the water while the scuba no, diver was going my through My media consultant will uh, handle that question, Brooke. <laughs> 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 Why so, didn't we tell the city no water for two days? Because that's how long it would take. Because you would have to turn the water off for the scuba divers to go through or because they were okay. dirty or... The people use... The south of the river, we, we, we use about 90 million gallons a day of water. South of the river, I have three reservoirs, 20, 20, and 20, 60 million gallons of water. We would run out of water in 18 hours. No, If no, you turn sorry. it off. I don't understand why you have hours. to turn it off just because you got a couple guys in there. Is it, is it too fast for them then? And you can't have people in the water. That's kind of a no-no also. <laughs> that is an absolute... I, I worked at a water plant in Gillette, Wyoming. I don't know why. <laughs> you know what's funny is I worked at they the water a, plant. I worked at the water plant, and nobody, and you've been to the water plant, nobody ever talks about don't spit in the water, don't contaminate the water, don't mess with the water. I don't know why, but as employees, it's sacrilegious to pollute the water at the water treatment plant, you know? So I maybe mean, ducks don't I'm think standing so. around the clear well. It's all drinking water. I don't know why, but nobody messes with it. You know, it's that's, that's our product. Don't touch it. When my wife worked down there, they would uh, have to go chase the baby ducks around the wells. Because of the <laughs> right. You don't want. Well, luckily the clear wells are inside, but for some reason nobody ever messed with the clean water. N nobody does. So everybody works there. There's a respect that you, I don't know, you just, it's funny. I never thought about it. Possibly uh, unusual in a... Uh... Brooke, you got a question? <laughs> <laughs> I know where you work, I'm asking why I wasn't one. <laughs> okay. I know it, everyone worked around the clock on this, but how many people? On each shift? On each shift. Depending on the, kind of depend on the activity. We would have uh, two or three people in the trailer, especially during the day, and a couple people at night. Up on the top, depending on the activity, you had a crane operator and two guys, two or three guys emptying, emptying shale onto the ground. And then during the day, the trucks would come and haul the, the spoil away. Then when the pipe lane came, then we had truck drivers bringing in pipe and wood and people <laughs> delivering stuff. And then underground, we had five or six people. We had a train, three train operators, engineers, or operating engineers. We had the guy running the TBM. He's an operating engineer. You have at least two, one or two inspectors on site. There in the day, the, the main engineer was there, Clay, and then the other support staff, two or three people in the trailer from Black and Beach. Then the director would come out, the head of the water plant would come down, and um, just maybe 12, 15 people during day shift. Then they did maintenance during the day. The first shift was always maintenance, and they would drill the hole. And then second shift, the, the miners would come in, and uh, we'd go to the face and we'd mine. And then third shift, same way. Okay. It's construction. Really, it's in a lot of people. It's a lot of money. Um, I, I get a little claustrophobic. You know, I, I grew up in New York City and experienced the subways a lot. But it suddenly occurs to me, what if, I mean, what if you had a little emergency there or if you had to use the restroom? 
What did you tell me to have? We, we called that with the, the water that went back to the downshaft. There was a little bit of a slope. It really had another name, and it was called, it was called the piss ditch. And, and it was dark. It was dark down there. And if you had to go number two, you would go in the, the uh, shale cars. You, you didn't have time. It took an hour to get out of the tunnel. If there was a train available. I did Jack. Jack, I love Jack. He was day shift. He was the head guy, inspector. He'd, every day, he'd walk the tunnel out. So he'd walk the mile or two out, and I did it with him one day. You talk about a lonely walk. No trains, nothing coming, and you walk a mile, two miles, by yourself. That's the underground, not the, 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 not the, the vertical one. But no, the no, you took the elevator. There's an elevator at the shaft, and you physically took a construction confined little elevator box <laughs> on the side wall. And that rickety, you know, building elevator, construction elevator. It was fun. I jumped at the chance. Thank you. To, to work on the tunnel. Because they asked me, you want to go work on the tunnel? Yeah. So I'm wondering about water towers. Um, I mean, are there, any new, are there any new water towers coming in the future with Kansas City, Missouri or not? Or? Well, we just built one in the curve up at uh, Liberty, 435 in Cookingham. There's a brand new tank there, and it's okay. on Sherman Road. So oh. guess what we call it? We did a contest. Do you remember? The Sherman Tank. Sherman, Sherman Road Tank. Sherman, tank. Sherman <laughs> Road Tank. It's okay. on Sherman Road, so they named it Sherman Road Tank. Pretty funny. Okay. If you know anything about World War II. Of course. But that's our newest water tower. It's a, I think it's about a million gallon, and it was built, uh, say, two years ago. You know, elevated storage isn't that important for Kansas City. We uh, maintain our pressure through SCADA and pumps, uh, pumping. One guy controls the entire city, 321 square miles of city. We're, we're the same size as four little cities. What's like SCADA? SCADA? SCADA is a radio system of antennas that uh, connect all the wastewater stations and all the water stations and I can, sit at a, I can sit at a computer in a special build, secured building, and I run all the pump stations. There's nobody at them anymore. There's no people at them. I mean, we send a guy around every day. No, no. We send a guy every eight hours to every station to get a sample of water, and we check it. So we check 160-some water samples throughout the system every day to assure... So, you go into water station, what do we turn? Turn off the water. It has a little sign, do not shut off this tap. Because it runs continuously. Because they want the latest water. And then that has gone down, and it has to pass EPA standards. So I have 160 samples. I've got to check for EPA standards every day. So the lab is also 24 hours. It was in the, it's at the water plant. We built that in 1992. Uh, Um, it's in the report. If you're a customer, you get the report once a year, and it shows the standard. It actually has the standard in it, and it has the limits that we found for that year of what's in it. What's really cool is, having worked in the lab as an engineer, I had to redo the air conditioning. The, we have the plasma machine. Do you know what a plasma machine is? It's what the FBI uses to identify where the paint is from. So it does the ultimate spectroscopy. So it has a plasma torch, and it takes the water and burns it, and then it looks at every element in that water. So, and they can tell how much is in it. And so they're looking at every metal in the water and how much. So um, all those 160 <coughs> samples have to go through. There's bacterial growth. There's the normal things, but then metals. Heavy-duty metals. But it's in your bill. You'll get a copy every year of the annual report. It's probably online, too. Are there any uh, tunnels in Kansas City's in the near future? Oh, God, yes. That's why, see, 
Black and Veatch built this tunnel. So the, the muckety-muck back at Black and Veatch, I was talking to him about it, and he's like, oh, man, I'm going to be out of town. And I said, look, I will arrange that with the director we give this talk at 63rd Street, and you can be there and have 15 minutes. Um, for the consent decree, for the $5 billion project we're working on for the next 20 years that we all get to pay for, um, there are some tunnels, but um, wa uh, wastewater storage tunnels. So we'll be doing 20-foot diameter tunnels and then just solid concrete store wastewater in during rain events. Um, and I'm not really sure where they're at in, by, by 2035 that we'll be putting those in. So Black and Veatch would like a shot at designing. So they want, when I'd give this presentation, they, this was a very successful project for us and Black and Veatch. And it's worked wonderful. And it came in on, on time, on budget. There were no change orders. There were no changes in this project. It was really a great project to be a part of. Sorry. Any other questions? Oh, Marcus, EPA. Where's Linda now? Or is she you know, on another you project? You know, I don't know. It belonged, Linda belonged to um, Mole Kasuf. Mole Kasuf was the two contractors that did a joint venture because Mole, the tunneling company, at the time couldn't bond a $20 million project. Um, back in 91, that was uh, one of our biggest projects ever. <laughs> it's not anymore. Anyway, um, so... Linda could easily go to another tunneling. But the funny thing about tunneling is Linda will only work on a 12-foot diameter tunnel, period. And like the channel, you know the railroad under uh, France and England? Everybody knows that? What's the diameter? 30, yeah, 35, 36 foot. Did you, guys know, did you guys know they built a tunnel under the Swiss Alps from France to Italy? I don't know how long it is. There's a YouTube on it. They had to, anyway, I don't know what the diameter of it is, but it was the massivest tunnel project ever. They do it all over. There's ones up in Sweden and Norway and railroad, railroad, railroad. Well, it's the same. You're still digging a hole in the ground, but I would imagine uh, 30 years later the uh, technology has hopefully advanced a little bit. No, They're probably not, not really. using mules anymore. Or... <laughs> Yeah, the first one was donkeys and dynamite. That's what I like to say. I love that. But yeah, we used a modern tunneling machine, which is really the way it's done now. If you go online and put in TBM, tunnel boring machine, there's a thousand pictures and a thousand diameters. And like I'm talking to Clay, and he's doing tunnels in St. Louis for the consent degree for the city there. And he's doing big tunnels for St. Louis. Biggest tunnel I've been in was Atlanta. It was 26 foot diameter, 11 miles long for their sewer system in 1996. 96? Maybe a little later than that. Maybe it was, I don't know, 97, 98. It was a wastewater conference. So I got to go in the wastewater tunnel. And I jumped at that chance too. Did they have to shut the flow off? Wastewater, when you build a wastewater tunnel, there was nothing there before. So there's no flow. You know? <laughs> well, it's like this. There, there was no flow at 350 foot deep of anything. You ask silly questions. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I want to thank you for, for uh, regaling us with all this wonderful uh, information and history, Sean. And uh, as always, uh, it's been a very entertaining presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.